Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome to Real Life Dungeons and Dragons. I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna have fun in this talk. I am Garima, and I am from India. I worked out of Ireland. I recently moved to New York when I got married, and I work with Pivotal. How many of you know about it? Cool, I'm very happy. And I work with Cloud Cash. It's highly distributed, um, in-memory, database. It's fun, it's really great, you should use it. Give it a try. But today I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about your pain of going on call. How many of you go on call? Have gone on call in past? Great. How many of you have enough team members to go on call? This talk is for you. This talk is for you. How many of you think that on call is stressful? Great. How many of you think that onboarding a newbie for going on call is even more stressful? <laughs> cool. And last question. This is my last question, I promise. Uh, how many of you know the game Dungeons and Dragons? The normal one, not my version. <laughs> cool, great. All right, I am going to talk a lot from Site Reliability Engineering, a book published by Googlers, and it's a great book. It can be boring sometimes, but if you have patience, I loved it. Um, uh, I'm going to call it SRE book throughout this presentation, and I'm going to use a few words from there. So let's dive in why going on call can be stressful. For, as per SRE book, for one person, it is healthy to go on call in a month just for one week. If you go more than that, you're going to be sad. <laughs> so now, for, for a healthy team, there has to be a primary on call member and a secondary on call member, which becomes two. And four times a week, four, four weeks in a month makes us eight people. So those who raise their hands that they have enough team members, do you have eight highly efficient people going on call who knows everything about your system? How many of you have that? All right, I just see the small hand raising. <laughs> small. Cool. All right. Again, as per the SRE book, the number of incidents per day the max number of incidents, which will keep you healthy if you're on call, is two. How many of you actually have just two incidents per day? I'm really happy for you. <laughs> cool. Um, now comes the point of how do you onboard people to go on call? So clearly, we need more people to go on call. The best, one of the best practices is to draw some boxes and lines. This is how infrastructure is. This is where the great DB is. Don't touch it. It's going to fail. It's going to break and things like that. It's great. But it can be stressful for the person who is doing it often. And it's just not a hands-on experience. Next is fire drill. This is one of my favorite practice to onboard people to go on call. Um, it is great. I love it. The only disadvantage with this is that it is helpful for the person who is doing the fire drill, not for the rest of the team. So we have Dungeons and Dragons, which is there for the whole team. It is a practice that we follow at Pivotal. Um, it has a dungeon master, as same as the real game. The role of dungeon master is to guide the team to solve an incident which might have happened in past. And then the rest of the team can interact with the dungeon master and ask questions like, what's the status of DB? Or what happened when you did LS in the system? And things like that. So Dungeons and Dragons is a practice mentioned by Site Reliability Engineering book. It says, selection mechanism for picking a disaster, followed by role playing, in which one person plays the part of a dungeon master, in this case, the system, and the other person plays the part of on-call engineer. 
what the on-call on engineer said to do, and we compare this against what they actually should have done. And that's all. That's mostly what we have in SRE book. But at Pivotal, we have taken this to one step further. Let's back this up by science. That when you are in a stressful situation, cortisol is, re uh, is released in your system. It's not so great, but it is, it is very helpful in building memory. So idea is to put the whole team in a stressful situation of solving a problem and then build that memory. So what will you gain after this talk? You'll gain that D&D &D is a non-destructive, fun and easy game. It, that the stress creates memory and it makes your team member confident and knowledgeable about your system. How will we do this? Clearly, you have no clue about my infrastructure, and you will have some clue about my infrastructure by the end of this talk. If in 45 minutes, you will, you will have little more information about my infrastructure, then imagine how much information you can get about your infrastructure. So, how to play? There's a dungeon master, in this case, that's me. And I have a really nice dragon as well over here. Um, just to show off that I am the dungeon master. And you all are the rest of my team. And you all will help me solve a few problems. Let's do a quick demo. And then we'll move on to the real game. So, in my setup, the dungeon master says, we have a problem. We have 140 incidents rates raised by customers that they cannot access the first page of our website since today morning. Oh, I see. Did we deploy something new in the system? <laughs> yes, dev, dev team did a deployment overnight for a customer X feature. Are we receiving any logs of these requests? <laughs> no, there are no logs in our load balancer. In fact, the number of requests are less than yesterday. Interesting. What is the URL that they are trying? It's dungeonsareal.com. <laughs> what IP we get when we do dig dungeonsareal.com? We get 10.2.33.24. This looks like an internal IP. What is the IP of load balancer? It's 45.22. something something. Let's change the domain setting first to point to this IP, and then we can investigate what happened. And this is something similar that happened in, in past with my DND, and this is just a quick demo and a, a scene that what you are gonna, going to be doing and what I am going to be presenting. Um, one last thing before we move on to the, to the real game is that the assumptions that we need to make is that this is not a real production for two reasons. One, I would not want to expose my real production system in front of really amazing DevOps engineers sitting over here. And two, I don't have a production system. So you will have to consider that all the requests and the system that you're seeing is, is a really highly efficient highly loaded production system. If you see one request, you need to assume that it's like 10,000 requests in the system. And it's a startup. Things are set up in a very fragile way. And don't expect amazing automation tools over here. This is just a very small scale startup setup that I have presented here for you. So are you all ready to start? Yes. Cool. All right, put your developer hats on, DevOps hats on, and I am the dungeon master. <laughs> so, welcome to the world of dragons. We are, oh, not that one. We are a startup. We started three months ago. Our job is to provide APIs to sell dragons across the world. We have this really amazing dragon inventory uh, from where we ship dragons to people who want it. Uh, but that's not the case of our program or, or the website that we have written. The website is just to provide API for people uh, to pull that how many dragons they have for their account. 
Um, we, were, we were doing really great three months ago um, when we started. Unfortunately, our only DevOps engineer was eaten up by a dragon. Um, she was really great. I could get a few sense of things what she had, what she had set up, but you see, we are a startup. We were never in mood to write documentations and, um, you know, give more, share more context. But we have learned from our mistake. We will work on it. For now, help us solve the problem. We have hired all of you, all these amazing DevOps engineers, to help us solve the problems. So let's begin. Let's begin with our first problem. And from here, you will have to start answering, you will have to start poking the system and ask questions to me how to solve the problem. So the first problem is we are getting a not secure connection on our website. All the clients who use our APIs are also complaining about something the same. How would you solve this problem? Let me show you the problem. This is our API. Uh, that's how it looks like. It's, it's super nice. I understand this is HTML, CSS, and everything is here. I'm sure you are assuming that. But there is this, I don't know what does it even mean. Actually, I know, but just for the sake of this role, <laughs> I know. Um, there's something like not secure and a red color showing up. Can anyone of you help me solve this problem? Some of you, anyone, please raise your hand what to do. Go ahead. What is a certificate? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you questions so that the whole team would know what, what I'm aiming towards. So can you help me? What is a certificate here? And what's the expiration date that you are aiming for? OK. Cool. Uh, do you want to help me how to find it? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, the certificate has expired. And I do remember that we have a renewed certificate as well from somewhere. Um, but I don't know where to put the certificate. Does anyone want to help me here? Go ahead. The only DevOps engineer that we had has died, and I have no clue. <laughs> and I have no clue about the SSL termination. But I can fire a lot of commands here on your behalf. Just tell me what to do. To, to the website. OK. Let's see. You will have to also help me with the command. Uh, is the font bigger enough? Is that good? Cool. Um, is that what you want? says something. Uh, we're going to ignore this section. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, so there are some IPs here. 
what next? What what should we do next? Which IP are you aiming for? This one? You said something else as well? This one. I'm gonna, I was about to use the same died excuse, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and let's look up on the domain. Okay, how? I do remember that we have a few cloud in premise things like AWS, GCP, Azure, all the names you take, our startup has used all of them. So, <laughs> all of them. Uh, we are even on vSphere as well. Um, but um, I don't know where this load, ba this load balancer might be sitting, so maybe you might need to help me with this IP if it belongs to any one of those. Go ahead. Yes, we do. We, we are all DevOps. We, we go agile. Um, yes, we have. <laughs> we, we do have GitHub uh, with us, but there are like thousands of repos. Um, which one? I might have gone on that route, but I'm going to wait for some time on that. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure, let's type that. Do you want to share what this who is command does? So this will tell us which cloud we are using for that IP. Sounds great. Um, Google Cloud? Sounds good. Oh, I can open the Google Cloud console. And that's how it looks like. Uh, what next? So now we know the IP belongs to Google Cloud. What, what should be our next step to get to the point where the SSL termination happens? Anyone want to try? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm going to pretend that I also don't know it as much. Um, and there are some load balances which are showing the, not the ones which I would want to show. So I'm going to go to um, the actual load balancing section. And this is one of the load balances. It should show up soon. Yes, I do. Yes. We, the DevOps engineer who died, she was really great. She did a lot of automation on the things which required the renewal of stuff. So since this is not showing up right now, I am going to take a step further that this, this is the right place. This is where the load balancer is sitting. And if you know the Google Cloud Platform, it's a one-click change, and we can change the certificate from there. Um, this was a small demo of a very small D&D. &D. Now let's dive into the real one. Let's go for the next problem that we have. <clears throat> So next problem is requests in dungeon. After a late night deployment by, of our new app by dev team, we started getting errors where all our clients are randomly receiving HTTP code 429. 
this is this issue did not appear in non production environment how will you solve this problem um, and the f and for the sake of running this problem i am going to run a pressure script on the system Uh, and I'm going to show you what it is before you start doubting it. What? It was supposed to be here. <laughs> Directory matters. It's nothing. It's a very simple for loop which is going to curl the website. That's it. This is the get dragon count. That's it. So I'm just going to run it. And I'm going to show you the dragon count as well. So this is the API which says how many uh, dragon the customer has. And as you could see, there was a 429 show up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this is the problem that we are receiving. Help us, please help us. Uh, our DevOps engineer is dead. We can't do much. And I can make a lot of excuses here, but please help us. Anybody? Now this is the interesting part. Here is where we can SSH onto a few VMs and break stuff. Brace yourselves. Go ahead. Cool. Uh, so if I heard it correctly, you are expecting to see in the monitoring if there is a change of request pattern? That's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't think. Since we are a startup, we, we did not set up a monitoring tool that great. Uh, um, I'm going to give it a try. This is our load balancer. Um, and it has a monitoring. Uh, and that's what we get. This is a startup. We don't know what this is going to mean. I'm going to use that excuse a lot. And if it is annoying, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> um, so yes, this is, you might need to, you might want to ignore this spike because this is the pressure script that I am using. But that's all I have for monitoring. Any other tries? Please, go ahead. Uh, could you please read? There, there might be some access logs, yes. Um, but I don't know how to get to those VMs to look at the logs. If you want to help me. We just looked at the load balancer, so there might be a few VMs connected to it. And I don't know more than that. So, I, Could you please raise the hand? Yeah. Yes, I can have a look at those VMs. These are the VMs connected to that load balancer. So I, um, I know the Google platform enough to say that these green lines means that they are healthy. Anyone else? Thank you. Sure. Is this font size good enough? I am on the VM. What next? Rip oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the command? <laughs> you wish I you, you you were joking, right, when you said reboot. <laughs> no, I'm gonna reboot it. <laughs> the automation is not that great that on reboot things will start. I don't even know what things to start. So, who else is wanna? Try, who else wanna try something? Please go ahead. 
can can I go to what? Script D with the for loop. Oh, the for loop script. It's here. And do you want me to cat it or something? This is from a different VM. This is this okay. is considered my local machine. Please go ahead. Uh, I might need to wait for the mic to reach to you now. Um, could you please pass on mic to? Okay. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Can it be Apache Max connection setting? Hitting, we, we're hitting that setting on the three VMs behind the F5 or the load balancer. Okay. How do you want to test that? Not test it. If you look at the HTTP conf, you should see something about the max connections. I, I think it's max clients parameters that tells you how the maximum number of connections the Apache can accept. After that, it will throw an error. On the load balancer? No, said? on the VMs. Okay. Apache. Do you want to just say out the commands out loud? No, they just list the uh, HTTP conf and see if the settings are there or not. I don't remember the exact, you know, directive. Is it? Yeah. Or, yeah. I'm going to move on to the next one for now. Mm, okay. I don't know a better way to look at it, but let's see. Front end. Port 80 and port 443. Um, on port 80, nothing is working. Any other tries? Sorry, what? Good guess. <clears throat> so there's something called the Dragon API, which is running on it. <laughs> you bet. Um, in the interest of time, um, I am going to ls over here. And there's a Dragon API sitting right over there. That was my hint. And it is executable. And if we go to the code base of Dragon API, now, Get, getting back to your point of going to um, GitHub repo and finding out something, this is the Dragon API, which is here, and that's the code base that we have. And since we are running out on time, I'm just going to show you the problem that in the code base, someone has added a rule for throttling requests. Uh, and this actually did happen to me in, an, in a startup where I was working that there was a load balancer sitting right in front of three VMs and they added a logic in the VM for throttling the requests from incoming IP. And the IP was always the load balancer IP. <laughs> I love being there. Um, so yes, um, I, have, I had two more scenarios for you. Um, I was being, uh, um, I was hoping to get more done, but this is what a Dungeons and Dragon is. You know a little bit more about my, my setup right now. How many of you learned at least a new command today? If you do that with your team, um, you will end up in learning from that one person who is a who is a wizard in going on call, who just solves a problem like this, but you don't know how do they do it. If you follow DNDs, you will be able to learn more from them. And that's, that's mostly what DND is. We, we have take, at Pivotal, we have taken this to one step further, where we even 
solve not the incidence problems, but even a CI related problem, which was a very tricky problem to solve. We just do our DND right there for, for the team members, and they, we all solve it together, and we learn a lot from each other. And we also use incident report if you can't replicate the issue. And we use uh, snapshots from uh, screenshots and the log, log snippets from the incident report to do the DND for us. And that's mostly DNDs. Thank you so much.